A stop motion puppet is a real object bathed in real light, manipulated by a human hand. We start off with a 2D image of a character, and my job is to turn that 2D image into a three-dimensional puppet, which can talk, can walk, can run, can emote. I want you to try that again, but with conviction! We have to then plan out how we're going to make that puppet move. We will make an armature, which is a skeleton, but we created metal, ball and socket joints, and sort of tiny engineered pieces, which is what allows the animator to pose the puppet frame by frame. So this is um, Norman's armature. The armature exists to prop the puppet up and make it animatable. The idea is to make him be able to stand, walk, perform. Run! I think that the style of Leica is a certain realism, but I think what we've managed to get with Paranorman is a designed realism. This project has been incredibly challenging for the puppet department because the shapes and the sizes of the puppets are so extreme. We've got characters that have huge necks. We've got characters with big, thick arms. All the things that are a big no-no in puppet making. It's really hard. You can't make an armature, a skeleton, sort of as big as a big square puppet, and we've managed to get them working, and you'll see it in the movie, hopefully. Big square things that look like they're never going to move can actually stretch their arms and move all over, you know, jump onto cars. This is my moment. Neil is adorable in every which way. We had this huge challenge that we'd got to make. Literally, as a puppet, you would describe him as a ball on a ball. You know, it's like, how on earth are you going to get that to move and giggle and laugh? <laughs> we wanted to make the most of his little belly, so we put a belly mover in there, so when he giggles, you can see it moving. There's this mechanism that we came up with that's taken from guitar, in this case, <laughs> a guitar tuning device. Belly mover made a huge difference. They always do stuff like that to me. Neil's hair is made out of plant fibers and synthetic fibers. It's a mix of both of those textures and a lot of different colors. You can see there's even some green. And we clip a bunch of hair from these strands that we then hot glue to these little wires. And then once the end of the wire is sort of covered up, then we just wrap these strands, sort of making little roses on stems. Then after we have hundreds of them, we cut the stems off and glue them to his head. And we refer to pictures of him to make sure that we get, you know, a big red curl and a little yellow curl kind of in the same spot every time. You look nice today. I like what you've done with your hair. What's really cute about Norman's hair is it, it does have its own little personality. There are all those great moments when he is combing his hair and you see that it just sort of goes funk and goes right back up. Norman's hair is made out of goat hair, and then we dye it using regular box dye that you can buy at the grocery store. It's two colors. It's sort of this darker brown, and then it has this ombre effect into this lighter tip. And then from these little, we call them shtucks, we make all these individual spikes. Um, and I think there's over 275 spikes on one Norman head, all made by hand. And each spike is then hand glued onto his little wig cap. And it takes about just a little under a week to build one Norman wig. I know that this seems crazy. Believe me, I am with you on that. The thing that I think every child that comes into our workshop and every adult as well is totally blown away with is the costuming, the final layer on the puppets. The detail is amazing on this. This is Norman. He's wearing his favourite jeans and his favourite hoodie. He's got all his badges on his backpack. He's got one there, one there, one there. And then he's got his little favourite key fobs here. We make everything by hand. Everything's hand dyed, hand painted, hand stitched. So these are Norman's shoes and they are made from this leather. And we colour them ourselves. They wear like real shoes would wear. So it's believable and that's what we really want. We want all of our costumes to be absolutely believable in the world that they're supposed to exist in.
You really don't know until you get that puppet out of the mould and you start moving it as to whether it really, all the planning and all the discussions and all the ideas, whether they're all going to come, you know, whether they're all going to work. Um, so when it does, it's like, woohoo! Perfect. Now the geeks are in charge. <laughs>